Whereas Aftermath County School Board has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to the affirmative record vote in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, whereas Section 2.1-3771B of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this school board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Aftermath County School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, Public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion <coughs> on which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered. So Chair, I move to approve the personnel list. Chair, I uh, move that we approve the readmission cases 05, 21, 24, 01, and 02. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And can I get a motion on 3 and 4? 10.03 and 10.04. Madam Chair, I move that we approve as amended cases 05, 21, 24, 03. 521-2404. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, next up, public comment. And I will just say I recognize we have some employees here. It's nice to see you all. Um, very glad that we could, in recent months, give you all a raise, and most recently, a retention bonus. We value you all, we appreciate you all, and we're, we're glad to see you. Rules for public comment. 
One, identify yourself by name and not by one address. Two, speakers are limited to three minutes. Three, individuals may reserve or transfer their time to another speaker. Four, specific personnel matters must not be initiated at public meeting. Five, speakers cannot be abusive, threatening, or use profanity. Six, specify the nature of your remarks. Seven, speakers who have previously spoken on the subject for public comment should not be allowed to readdress the board during the same public comment period. Eight, specific questions should be resolved prior to the meeting by contacting the superintendent or the appropriate staff member. Nine, anyone, <coughs> anyone who would like to present a PowerPoint presentation for public comment has to present the presentation 24 hours in advance for review by the staff for appropriateness. Ten, all questions shall be directed to the chairman who will, at his or her discretion, solicit the response from the appropriate staff member. First up, we have Perry Chisholm. Good evening, board members. It's good to be here. I am here on tonight. Could you please stay here? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay. Put the microphone on. <laughs> Again, my name is Harry Chisholm. Uh, my address is 1349 Rowland Drive, Painter, Virginia. Uh, do I need my uh, email address? Yeah. Okay. I'm here on tonight as a 50 year, 52 year bus driver. 50 years on contract, two years on asking me to come back and help out because we didn't have any bus drivers. I'm back on that condition. I, my reason is because uh, you gotta love kids to do this job. Uh, you gotta know how to talk to people to do this job. And I am representing uh, a few of us who came back after our retirement to come back to be a part of this great school system. And right now from what we heard about is a sentence or that we were not part of it. And we we are not what you call substitute drivers because we don't stay home and wait for somebody to call us because of driver's sake. We are an everyday driver like the contract drivers. We get up every morning and get on that bus and drive that school bus. Also that when the high school meet drivers, we do double double runs. I do my run, go to high school run. I feel that we are doing the same job. Uh, we don't sign a contract because we can't sign a contract. If we could, we would, but we can't. Uh, I'm here to say if we can sign on a promissory note, we'll do that. <laughs> but I know that's not possible. But we just want to be treated the same way because we are still full-time drivers. We're just not substitute drivers. We are full-time drivers. We get up out there every morning to make that run. And uh, we make, we have a, everyone have their own runs. Like I say, we're not the sub two driver who gets up every morning and wait for a phone call, somebody out to just drive a bus. We are regular bus drivers. And we just want the same thing that every regular bus driver can. And that's why I'm here tonight. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you. Meadows, 26404 Sea Breeze Drive, Accomack, Virginia. And I'm with Harry on this and all the other retirement 
right here, same thing. You get up every morning. I've never missed a day since I came back. I retired in June, last June. I stayed home June, July, August, September. I was going out of my mind. I had to come back. <laughs> we needed drivers. So I came back. Haven't missed a day. Well, every day. I'm a multitasker. I know 10 other routes. And when I get a call, no matter what time it is, 5 in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, yeah, can you do this? Can you go here? Can you run here? Yes, I do. I do it all. I admit it. I love it. I love my job. That's why I do it. Um, I think that we should be included in something, anything, um, would be really nice. It would be, we would all love it. But if we don't get anything, it's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And people are talking, and it's not, not really good right now. So we are asking to reconsider and add us in something, anything, and we would be grateful for it. Thank you. that mic. I know. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I am Della Jordan. My address is 232 Matthews Courthouse Avenue. I would like to give my minutes to Miss Lois Evans, who's my friend here from work. Thank you. Can you hear me nice and loud? Yeah. Good. Madam Chairman, Dr. Hall, school board members, staff members that are here from the school system, and the general republic. I'm Lois Evans, and I live at 69 Hill Street in Hancock. I know that we all have made decisions in our life that we may regret, that were made in haste and lack of facts. Afterwards, we think, why did I ever say yes or no to that? But once we become educated in the facts, we wish we could change our response. I started to work for ACPS on July 1st, 1990, as Administrative Secretary 2 at the Central Office in the Department of Instruction. After several years, I became Administrative Secretary 3 to the superintendent. I have now worked 34 years for multiple superintendents in Accomack County. One of my jobs for each superintendent was to send out division memos to all employees detailing important information that everyone should know. When I heard that the school board voted no to the proposal which states 12 month employees will switch to summer hours, which is a 10 hour, four day work week and be off on Fridays. Needless to say, I was distraught, distressed, and very upset about this decision that was made at 11.30 p.m. and in haste to end a late night meeting. How could they say no to what has been a standard practice and procedure for the past 34 years? It is the one and only perk that 12 month employees receive. It was a real morale drowner for everyone in the division. Therefore, I began to research through the division memos and discovered that we have switched to summer hours, get this, since 1991. Even the public knows that we switch to our summer hours as soon as the school year is over. We return to our regular hours in the second week of August when the new teachers start. Regular hours are defined as Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We must stop now and ask ourselves, how does this, this decision impact 
full-time employees and the teachers whom we need to teach summer school. Because this has been a long time practice in Accomack County Schools for 34 years, the employees and the general public know that we will be switching to the summer hours. I'm sure many of our employees have already planned their summer family vacations around this fact. Also, we'll be saving money since the HVAC and other systems will only be running four days a week and at a reduced rate on Fridays and the weekends. <coughs> this decision greatly impacts the whole division in many ways for 12 month employees to include teachers, instructional assistants, technology workers, maintenance workers, the grounds crew, custodians, secretaries, bookkeepers, and even the building administrators. Plus the summer schedule, which you had received last month. Remember, I hope you all took a look at this to see all the many wonderful projects that we offer our students in the summertime. It has been proven each year that all of these summer projects have been completed successfully in four 10-hour days. Now through research, we have become more educated on the facts. I asked the school board to rescind their decision, take another look at this, and say yes to give us back our summer hours. Now I have documented uh, the numbers of the division memos clear back to 1991 what the number of the division memo was the topic of course was summer hours and the person who issued that memo so i hope that perhaps you can take another look and maybe rescind your decision to grant us back our Fridays off our summer hours thank you Two of those years I've been as a uh, on the TAR program. I uh, agree with Mr. Chisholm and the vast majority of the uh, sub drivers that uh, we should just be, we should just actually treat fairly. Uh, there's no need to me going over the same thing that we're going over. Uh, you know that we do the job as the regular drivers do. We have to do everything they require to do. And all we're asking is just do the right thing. And, uh, Award us our bonus. We, we, you know, we allow you to you. Give it back to us. Thank you. Good evening again, everyone. My name is Alicia Payne, and I live at 19335 Watcher Creek Road in Melba. This evening, I am here as a 12-month employee. We know it's a constant challenge to offer fair and competitive salaries to attract educators to our area and has been a focus for our board, and for that, I truly appreciate the continued effort. I personally thank you for the retention bonus as it's a token of, as it's a token of appreciation to those who have remained committed to educating the children here in Accomack County Public Schools. I look forward to the report from the compensation study but also what changes that leads to for us as a county. But that is not why I'm here. I have been an ACPS employee for almost 22 years and a building administrator for five of those years. I have worked with many leaders and I can tell you that relationships matter. How we treat people matters. What we say to people and the image we portray matters. I simply wanna share with you today that the image in which I believe you as a board wish to portray 
that of a positive, respected, and appreciated image for 12-month employees is far from being received in that manner. One example of this image is reflected on days such as today, beginning with a phone call, well, for a two-hour delay, then a three-hour delay, stating that 12-month employees will report on time. This is interpreted, although not accurate, that our secretaries, bookkeepers, custodians, building admin, etc., are some sort of superheroes who are not affected by inclement weather. The message that, may, that many interpret is that our safety is less important. I don't believe at all that this is the image you are trying to portray. In addition, 12-month employees have been working their same 40-hour work week throughout the summer, in four days rather than five. Most recently, the decision was made to change back to the traditional five-day work week. It's become one of, those, one of the many types of outside-of-the-box thinking we need to attract individuals to these 12-month positions. The endless hours of attending outside-of-school hour events, responding to endless emails, providing supervision when a student is brought back to school, the sporting events, well, you get the idea. Unfortunately, we know that only in education do we have contracts that leave room for additional duties. And we complete those duties because it's what's best for children. Knowing that those four day work weeks were coming in the summer helped to make those hours spent away from our families and loved ones a little easier. I am here asking for you to help 12 month employees understand what drives the decision to make this change that has been such an incentive for so many of us. In fact, I would think the county has saved money by shutting down 11 buildings for one day a week. That's nine Fridays in the summer, 11 schools, 99 opportunities to save on electricity. What will it cost the county to change this pattern? I ask you to reconsider your decision to bring back the four day work week during the summer hours for 12 month employees. Not only could it be a financially wise decision, it could also send the message that 12 month employees are valued and appreciated knowing just how much extra time we put in throughout the school year. Thank you. Hi, good, good evening. My name is Christopher Reeder. I reside at 23174 Lemont Road, Clarksley, Virginia. Um, and I also wanted to come kind of piggyback off of that about the 12 month employees. Um, I'm back about a month into this job as transportation manager. So I was a teacher and then coming to 12 months, it was kind of nice to know that I would maybe possibly have Fridays off during the summer. It's kind of like an incentive. Um, a lot of projects the mechanics do like during the summer that involve long, longer hours, helps out with the 10 hours just so they can get their jobs completed in one day versus, you know, it might take them two days starting, getting stuff, all the materials they need to do that. It just helps out there. Not to mention the temperature in the shop, no air conditioning, none of that. Four days work week makes it a little better. At least they have like three days um, on weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, to kind of recover from that. Um, and again, like I said, it's like an incentive. Like right now, I'm going to need a new mechanic, um, administrative assistant. It's nice to have that as kind of an incentive. You know, we're kind of off on Fridays. You know, we work 10, four hour days during the summer. That helps out with that. Um, as Richard, I also want to kind of go off with the I want to try to consider our long-term substitute for tired drivers for the incentive bonus as well. My name is Charles Whitelock. Um, I live at uh, 28211 Brown Road, New Jersey, Virginia. The topic that I want to uh, bring up is about the uh, vapes. They have killed what feels like my school, my generation, friendships. And I want to ask you, what are you doing to um, stop this from happening? You know, people vaping in the bathrooms and stuff like that. And.
time, um, I believe there was a trial with vape sensors in the bathrooms and that was considered and then that idea was, it was decided that idea was not going to be followed up on. So they, they temporarily, they had vape sensors and I think they caught some people vaping and then they decided not to go forward with that. So we don't have those in any of our schools or bathrooms. Anyone else? I agree with you. It's I agree so with you. unhealthy. It's so it's so damaging. It's so detrimental and so very popular. I think we as a board need to really look into that and address that. And um, I, I thank you for that lot of seeing obviously your students, but uh, very important issue. Yes. And uh, there's one other thing. Um, this could be stopped even without um, vape detectors, like. Uh, I see that you, you know, you added metal detectors and all that. They still get those through because the teachers, they don't, you know, they don't check them good enough. They spend, some spend like five seconds looking through them, others spend like a minute. But you can't, you know, you stop everybody because then everybody's late. And yes, it's that really short time and the six or seven hundred book bags to check in 10 minutes. I reside at 33056 Stony Creek Road in New Church, Virginia. Um, I'm here to talk about special ed. Um, there are some things in this county that really need to be addressed as far as our special ed is concerned. Uh, one of the biggest things is the difficulty in navigating that system and figuring out what resources are there for you, um, what your options are, because too often, in this venue, you are made to feel that there are no choices, and that's not true. And it's not a very good feeling when you get in a room full of people and you're told that this is what you're getting, and that's not how it works. Um, and that is something that really needs to be addressed. Um, I would love to have a vehicle by which I can speak to this board offline because some of the things that I would like to address, excuse me, deal with minors and specific things that I don't want out in the open public. Um, there have been a lot of things that have gone right for me. I commend Dr. Hall and Della Jordan for all the help that they have given me in trying to navigate what I'm doing. I am a grandmother to two very beautiful neurodiverse children and I am coming into this late in the game and trying to pick up and fix things that went horribly wrong. That shouldn't have. The ball should have never been dropped. Um, but that being said, I've had some good positive things happen in moving forward. I have a wonderful tutor that if you guys don't sign that fella on, it's going to be a, a travesty because he is phenomenal. He has been doing a home-based um, tutoring with one of the children and he just has what it takes. He has the patience and so many times with these kids special ed, it just takes the patience, but it also takes the education and I would love to know where I can find that information who has the training and education in this county that specifically deals with the special needs that my boys have? Because if that's where they need to be, then that's where I want them to be. Because if they are not, it goes horribly south. And not everybody is trained in the right way. And I'm just going to say, please do away with the point and click little uh, certifications that happen for certain things when teachers come in to you know re uh, up their year it's like a certificate that you get that says that you know about a specific disorder and it's just it's just a point and click it's not real education and it's it's there needs to be real education but 
if there is a way that we can have an offline conversation with the whole board, and I certainly invite Dr. Hall to be there as well, I would love to do so to address some more specific issues. Thank you for coming. Would you be willing to meet with Dr. Hall? And oh, absolutely. And then if, if she cannot resolve your issues? Absolutely. We've met. We can put you on the agenda for... Right. Well, and, and my, my, my concern is, is there are things that need to be addressed that is a board thing that you guys need to be aware of that's happening, okay. that it needs to be fixed. The, the system is broken. It's really broken. So that's, that's a board thing. I have had many wonderful discussions with, with Dr. Hall, and she's been very helpful to me. I will say that. Custodians, we definitely need that Friday off, you know, because we work hard and that's our only time to do anything for ourselves or in it or anyone. So I wish, I hope that y'all look that over and give us back the Fridays off. Thank you very much. Thank you. for 8128 BB Road, Chincoteague, Virginia. First off, minor issue, could you please get some lighting out here before somebody breaks their neck at night? Okay, and y'all have been out here, we're getting out late at night and it's a lot, it's dark, pitch black. The second thing I would like to say is, um, obviously I've been to every meeting and I hear, I just heard Beth tonight talk about y'all have extra money, so these nice people really should get a, you know, they're full time, come on guys. You know, um, and I was here when y'all discussed the four day versus five day work week. Maybe they could split it up Monday through Thursday, four, 10 days for some people in central office or whatever, and Tuesday through Friday for some others. That's false. That way you've got a staff for the five days and you can get what you've got to get done. And I realize you probably just did it this year because there's a lot of things that has to be done, you know, with the building and all the staffing that has to be done, but that's a possibility. So, you know, if you could think about that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Next up, the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Does anybody have any questions or corrections? Is there a motion?
So you received my uh, federal program report. As you can see, we're coming along. Uh, Mr. Taylor, you had submitted something about uh, a different format on that, and, and I'm assuming this is what you were saying to apply to. I think that we have everything on that except for a uh, percentage expended, and we can begin that when we start our new federal programs, which will be uh, beginning this summer, to add that column. It's not really, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to submit an example to you as well. Okay, so I thought I thought I was responding to the one that had the example of the columns. Uh, we're meeting on this. We're meeting with all of these to make sure that we are going to properly expend them. Of course, the big ones are on the back, and we're considering S or three. Um, we have uh, I've met with Ms. Farrell, and we do expect to spend all of the summer summer programs money, which previously I said I wasn't sure if that was going to be spent, and we do believe we will spend that. The before and after school. We do not believe we will be able to spend that money. I've been saying that probably for over a year. Um, we have some, uh, the RARS and the educator recruitment and retention. Mentor teacher we will spend, but those recruitment and retention, I think Ms. Whitelock has told you before that the only ones who can participate in the second round are those who participated in the first and it's restricted from anybody else, so those will not be expected. <coughs> And the title programs, like I said, we're doing projections and working with the grant administrators to make sure those monies are timely expended. So are there any questions on the um, federal report? On the operating budget report, we're continuing to hone in to make sure our estimated remaining salaries and benefits are correct. You will see on operations and maintenance, it's showing a negative balance of 2.3 but $2.8 million of the expenditures are for carry forward projects from funds carried forward from last year. So are there any questions on that? of the compensation study. So that is done. Um, what they did is they reviewed job descriptions, they did a job analysis, they did a supervisor analysis, and then they did an employee analysis. In other words, asking questions of each party, making sure the job descriptions actually reflect what people do. And then they also, of course, compared them against salaries. Um, Accomack County Public Schools were compared against 16 school sizes, um, various comparable to to here, um, the systems included others in Virginia, Maryland, and North Carolina. We are meeting the executive team <coughs> meeting with Evergreen so that they can share their recommendations, and that's the final step. We will be meeting with them on May the 23rd, Thursday afternoon, and from that point, we'll review their recommendations, and then they would like to then present to the board. So if it is the board's desire, we will have Evergreen make a presentation to you the first meeting in June with the recommendations. What I can give you that stood out so far of what I've looked at is I have seen that um, our actual salaries for individuals on individual scales and administrators are not really too, too far off. What is really off is that our pay scales are really <coughs> far behind. So our pay scales are, for our administrators are like 25.6 behind the average minimum of the other agencies that we were compared against, school districts. Also that stood out specific positions as being behind, which I believe I shared this last time, was assistant principals, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, sub directors, groundskeepers, mechanics, and helpers, and principals and school secretaries. So they were the ones that stood out uh, very far behind, anywhere from 12% to 37% for our assistant principals. So I, I think you, you kind of hear the um, targeted areas we really need to look at. And again, that will be shared with you both on an individual person basis and also the overall arching of the, of the scale itself. 
of the actual salaries of some of these positions um, were not too bad itself. So most of those were the scales, but we are still lagging behind the actual salaries of an average assistant principals of 13.6% and some bookkeepers 23% low. And that's the actual salary of the minimum. And our bus drivers and grounds through workers were also behind the actual salaries of what we were compared against other districts. So we do have um, some work to do. Some of what we, we found out, we kind of knew. Um, we didn't know, of course, the percentages. Um, they will be shared with you and will be shared with everyone. And we just ask that the board to look at these and recognize that we have put money aside to fund this compensation study. And even if it's something that needs to be uh, funded over a two to three period year period, that certainly can be something that can be budgetary and look for. But our salary scale <coughs> definitely have to be improved on the administration end and some of our um, support staff positions, as I've explained. And again, we'll know more on Thursday about individual people um, that we can also um, share as well too. But if you'll put them on your calendar, if that works, for the first meeting in June, they'll be here to present. You can have them in person or on Zoom, whichever your preference, they're, they're be accommodating either. Um, Evergreen, they're part part of their agency is based out of Virginia. I want to say the one that we worked with was Richmond, mm -hmm. and she spent um, she spent a lot of days on site with us. She spent three consecutive days on site with us, and she had individual meetings with any um, particular employee group that wanted to join. We have rep we had representation from every employee group show up at the meetings, and those that did not attend were sent a survey, and then they were reminded four times, not three, but an extra one, four times to send their survey in. And she was placed with a participation, and I was too. It was about a 68% um, participation, and that's pretty good for surveys, it really is. Let's go. Any questions? We look forward to their findings. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Brandon Burkholder, the, the Director of Child Nutrition Services, and I'm just going to share with you an update uh, with, of staffing um, throughout the district, and then we'll break it down into each, each school location so I can show you guys um, the areas of greatest need because there are areas that we are um, looking at needing more help than others. So I'll share with you that we have one full time employee retiring. Um, we do have one full-time employee not returning for the school year 24-25 um, simply due to relocating. Uh, we do have an intern manager at Pumpkin Teague Elementary School. Um, I've been training her through the end of the year in hopes that she will apply for that position. So that would fill, once we fill that position, we will be full cafeteria managers. Uh, we, have do, we do have seven full-time vacancies district-wide, which is quite a few. Um, of those seven, I will say we have three to four uh, part-time positions, uh, people that are in part-time positions that I would certainly promote to fill these full-time spots. We definitely like to hire internally before we obviously um, advertise to the, to the public because we know that they've done their duty, they've been loyal, uh, they show up to work. They do a good job and I think that those people need to be considered for these positions. Um, so we will, that seven will probably look more like four um, once we do our summer promotions, which really isn't too bad. Um, we do have a decent amount of applications that are completed on hand, but right now we're in kind of a, a strange time because you can't really put anyone on contract at the end of the year and expect, or even part-time, expect them to work two or three weeks and then have the entire summer off. Um, no one's really looking at that as a, as a good um, opportunity for employment. Plus, the uh, we were waiting on the salary scale to come back so once we have a solid salary scale, I think that we'll be able to look, you know, into hiring more qualified candidates to fill these spots. We do have six part-time substitute vacancies. Um, like I said, some of those, that, that number will probably go up because some of our current part-time are gonna go full-time. And then you'll see the full-time 
uh, vacancies actually decrease for the fall. And we do have one area manager vacancy, which I do want to thank this board uh, for approving that new position. That is going to be an asset to this department. That is something we've needed in this school district for a long time um, to ensure compliance, um, to ensure going around to the cafeterias, making sure that the consistency of the meals, uh, food quality, things of that nature, making sure that every kitchen is running um, op you know, operationally well and that we're covering all the areas that we need to cover for federal reviews, audits, and things of that nature. So I do want to thank you for that. So that was kind of the broad spectrum of the district as a whole. Um, I do want to look more so you guys can see by school where we stand. These are the current staffing configurations that I have. This breaks down every school into full-time employees, including the manager. It has part-time employees, as well as the vacancies that are highlighted in yellow. Um, you can see Accomack, we have one full-time vacancy. Shingatik Elementary, we have one full-time vacancy. Kegatank, we are fully staffed. However, we've had a major attendance problem there. And I'll be honest with you, as the director, I think everyone's burnt out. Um, the pay has not been there. We are, you know, I, I think a lot of our workers are just, just tired. Um, they're working some of them six days a week doing Success Academy. And we have seen the attendance drop throughout the school year, just because I think, I think they're tired. It's a long year. It is a lot of work. They are underpaid and they're undervalued. And like I said, I think the last time I spoke with you guys, the morale is down. Um, I know that the, the, the pay has been, you know, like Beth Whitehouse <coughs> spoke about, it's, it's very low compared to a lot of other places you can go and work. And they have a lot of responsibility on them. So I commend them. Um, but like I said, the, the attendance has been down in that school. Matompkin has been a revolving door all year long. We have, right now, we have three full-time employees I'm the current manager. We have five part-time employees. Some of those have been recently hired. Um, had trouble getting them in the door. Um, once again, poor attendance. And we have two full-time employee vacancies here at Matompkin for the fall. Punkatique Elementary, uh, we have five full-time employees, including the manager, one part-time employee, and we will have one full-time employee vacancy in the fall. This is our middle and high staffing configurations. Um, I'd say we're a lot better. As you can see, there are very few yellow highlighted areas on this page because middle and high schools, we are pretty well fully staffed. Um, Arcadia High School is the one exception. We have the, the meal participation there has skyrocketed. Um, breakfast especially, lunch is even, we've seen good improvement with our lunches. Uh, we have four full-time employees, including the manager, three part-time, and we have one full-time vacancy. Um, Arcadia Middle School, we have four full-time employees, including the manager, three part-time employees, and one full-time vacancy. And then if you look through Shinkatik High, Nandua High, Nandua Middle, and Tangier, we have no vacancy. So we were fully staffed in those kitchens. And I wanna speak, um, I'm, I'm the director, I'm their supervisor, so I think this is my place to, to speak on behalf of my staff because they're hardworking. We have people that are in the same situation as, as these bus drivers that sit over here that have been loyal to this department, that have worked here for countless years and they've come to me since the announcement of the retention <clears throat> to sit Brandon. I'm coming in Monday through Friday. I'm not just a substitute. I'm coming in and working for you every day and I can only make so much money, so I can't sign a contract. And I think these people personally should be offered some sort of bonus, but even if it's not $1,000, even if it's not $2,000, it's just something to show that they're, they're you know, appreciated, they've been loyal to us, they come to work. When I need them to report to a school at 5.30 in the morning, they're the ones that answer their phones and they get up and they go. Um, I have six to eight of them, I'd say, that, that do this Monday through Friday that really, I feel, should be included along with these bus drivers. Um, so that, that, I just think that that's my place. Um, they look up to me, they, they, I'm their leader, so I, I need to, to definitely make sure that they've been loyal to me and they deserve every bit of it, just as these contract employees do. Because if you don't do anything for them, they're gonna go somewhere else and more, more than likely find employment where, where they're given opportunities like that. So I just, I want to thank them for all they do. Um, and this is my, I wanted to include this for you guys so you can break down some numbers. And this is going to align a lot with these staffing configurations because you're going to see 
it's called a meals per labor hour report. So I go through this monthly. This is something that I generate, I come up with per school, because this is my tool to know when do I need to move staff? When do I need to transfer a full-time employee to another kitchen? When have our meals increased to where we do not have enough staff to get it done? Where are people overworked? Where are people underworked? And why is it? Um, so this is like my go-to tool for staff. <coughs> I um, mean, you're going to see the reason you see the, the the numbers that are in blue are outside the, the recommended range. So you really want to be within 12 to 15 on your meals per labor hour, and you'll see my Tompkins all the way up to 21.58. So that means they have high meals per labor hour, which means we're serving entirely too many meals for how many staff we have in the in the school. So they are completely short staffed, as we we saw. We had three full time vacancies, two full time and one part time. Arcadia High School, that's the only high school where there's a vacancy and their meals have skyrocketed. So you'll see there why we, um, our meals per labor hour are too high because we simply don't have the staff um, for all the meals that we were pushing out in a day. Arcadia Middle School, slightly above. Um, for example, this manager has been running two serving lines by herself every day, getting it done. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, some of the work that these people do, and especially Arcadia High and Arcadia Middle, I commend them because. I've done it by myself, it's, it's tough. <laughs> you got kids coming through, making sure they have everything they need, taking money, counting meals. It's a lot, lot for one person to do, but they, they pulled it off. Um, we do move people around by this report, so I, I do transfer people from school to school. Maybe not necessarily the numbers, but the quality of the worker to see maybe somebody's better at this, somebody's better at that. Um, and if we need a good quality worker, say we need some pumpkin teeth to Acomac, we will do that just to get through, like especially this year till the end of the year, um, where we're in that kind of tough spot where you can't really hire full-time help. And we don't want to chase someone out the door saying you're gonna work 20 hours for three weeks, at 12.50 an hour, and then you're gonna sit home all summer without employment. So that that's that, that's kind of the, the last month or two where you sit at the end of the year. So it makes it kind of tough. And then you'll see on the opposite end of the spectrum, Chincoteague Elementary, Chincoteague High, and Tangier. Those are the only schools that are less than that 12 meals per labor hour. And simply because the student population is low, these are contracted workers that have been with us. Um, like Tangier, we have three full-time cafeteria staff. We can't really move them anywhere. <laughs> um, and same with Shinkati High and Shinkati Elementary. The staffing pretty much has stayed the same. And the meals, you're really only gonna improve so highly on those numbers <coughs> because you only have the student population that you have. Um, so that's, both ends of the spectrum, but the good thing is we are productive. If you're underproductive, you're less than that 12, and I don't see really anyone that's too far below that 12 besides the Shinkatee and Tangier, which that's to be expected. So we are, our people are productive, they're working hard, they are moving around, and they're getting the job done even though we have been extremely short of staff. Um, I've worked, thank you to Chris Reeder, uh, the Transportation Department, I really wanna thank him for letting us be a part of this event. Uh, we're gonna do a staff appreciation meal and a hiring and recruiting event. Uh, we all know we've had trouble recruiting, retaining employees, and I think this is going to be a nice event that we need to really start doing more of um, in the district. It's gonna be held at Matomp here at Matomkin on uh, June 22nd. Um, we're gonna have a staff appreciation lunch. So Johnny from the Transportation Department and myself, we're gonna come up with a nice meal for them. Um, on top of that, we're gonna be recruiting for bus drivers and child nutrition services employees. So I'll be on site with one of my cafeteria managers from Arcadia Middle School, who is phenomenal. Um, and we're gonna distribute applications, paper applications. She'll be there, I'll be there to discuss in-person vacancies, um, tell them a little bit more about the jobs, what they expect, what they'll be making, because by then we'll have a nice salary scale set. We'll have the word out about this retention bonus, and I really think that we're going to see a good amount of uh, interested candidates coming through the door for, for employment. Um, and like I said, we do have a nice, it's not that we don't have people applying right now, we do. We're just waiting on that set new salary scale to be set so that I can tell people, you come in the fall, this is what you're going to be making, not this $12.50 an hour. Um, push people right out the door and I've seen it happen. I had four people supposed to start in the last two months and saw twelve fifty an hour and right back out the door they go. So who can survive on twelve fifty an hour? So not many. Um, and then I've also just worked on yard signs. I'm gonna put them 
from the north end of the county to the south end of the county. Um, they got a nice design on them, really appealing to the public with a thousand dollar sign-on bonus, um, trying to recruit full-time and part-time cafeteria workers for the fall. And I'm gonna hand out flyers and try to do some extra advertisement to get, try to get the word out there. Um, I'm gonna advertise on our social media page, on our Facebook page, there's the link. As soon as our new flyer and our yard sign are done, I'll put a picture of them on there, share that with everyone. Um, and then the MES job fair with Chris Reeder. Once again, thank you for doing that with us. Um, I think that's gonna be a nice event if you all would like to attend, um, that would be great. And we just celebrated, while we're on the subject of staffing, we just celebrated uh, School Lunch Hero Day. So this is just a day to celebrate our people, um, our hardworking cafeteria staff. They all got nice shirts, nice aprons, gave them some new apparel, nice cafeteria lunch lady swag to go with their their, their job. Um, and it was a really nice event. We got some nice pictures here of them. Got the hard hats. They, we went all out for them. And this is what our staff doing, grab and go. Our middle and high school breakfast, which really has taken off. We've tried some new things the last few weeks, even though we're short staffed. We're already trying to prepare for this new sugar limit. And I know the sugar limit to breakfast have been a big concern, and I agree. I'm, I'm right there with you. I think that we need to provide higher protein, um, better choices, especially in our elementary school, because those students only have that one option. They don't come into the middle and high school and have five to six entree options. Um, but we've, we've gone to try homemade breakfast sandwiches, uh, bacon, egg, and cheese croissants, um, sausage, egg, and cheese, McMuffins, kind of like you get at McDonald's, something um, that, that is less sugar, higher protein, and still meets all of our requirements. So these, these things are just, they're gonna come with time as, as I am able to staff these kitchens a little bit better and pay our people a little bit better. Um, that's gonna make a huge difference. Some of our recent lunches here, and our staff, like I said, they, they've just done a phenomenal job pulling their weight, just being short staffed. I just want to say thank you to all of them. Anybody have any questions? So that's that's something we're going to need to discuss. Um, it can happen. We can do we can do kind of sort of like we do now where the kids come through the door. However, we could do like a second breakfast, for, like a formula where the kids could come to the cafeteria and get breakfast if they desire to eat in the cafeteria. Yes. That would not be a problem. Um, I feel like we would reach more students that way because in some of the elementary schools we have kids come in a little bit earlier. Um, they get dropped off a little earlier and we could, especially those ones I'm sure would be able to come to the cafeteria now. We also have the other end of the spectrum, the kids that get there kind of late, get dropped off late, barely have time to make the class. Those ones we could still serve in the hallways like we do now. Um, either way, we, we will have the right equipment to serve the hot breakfast. We will make sure that gets done. Absolutely, you're welcome. Jason. First, I would say that I would 100% support a retention bonus for the bus drivers, cafeteria workers, and SSNs. <coughs> you guys definitely deserve something. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully, the compensation study will show that you guys can get paid a lot more than 12.15. Because you guys are worth a lot more than 12.15 an hour. Um, and I just had a question about the uh, culinary students. Where how did that ever take place, or how did that work? I don't know if that's not so positive. Um, we had everything set up, and this, two of the students from Arcadia came to my office and said, I have other jobs in the evening, and this is just gonna be too much for me to do. Um, we had a plan to start that next day, and when one backed out, the other girl said, oh, I don't think I wanna do it either. So we did have it set, and that's something down the road that I'm absolutely open to, because there's so much that they can learn as far as taking money, cashiering, you know, counting drawers, learning about nutrition. There, there are a lot of things that I can teach them, especially when we have this area manager um, to go around and work with them on their first day, especially. Um, I'd be more than open to having students work for us, but it, it just, they didn't, they didn't take time. <laughs> I don't know if it's just logistic. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other one said, I don't think I can 
get down there because I'm up late late at night now and I got to go to my other job after school. He goes, it's just a lot for me. And you know, I didn't tell him no. I said, if this doesn't work for you, then I'm glad you came and told me and just did not, just didn't show up. Um, so. so maybe next year. I think we need to do it earlier yes, um, yes. because well, I think. Well, like you were just, that was kind of a band Yeah, yeah, yeah to get us through till the end of the year. It, I think if we advertise it, We'd, we'd have plenty of students that are interested. Especially, I, I think we're going to pay them. I think it was ten dollars an hour or something. Um, if we pay them, I think they would be more than more than happy to do it. And are we not going to pay those students? We oh yeah, we were. Yeah, we were. Um, and even then, they still didn't do it. So, um, but I, yeah, I would I would love it because a lot of other school districts are doing it. I'm more than open to taking students in because I, I'll teach them. I'll teach them whatever you know. It's life skills and it's things they need to know. They need to know how to cook. They need to know how to count money. They need to know how to take checks and see what an actual paper check looks like. So they don't learn that stuff these days. So I would absolutely take it. Thank you. that we didn't need to vote. Um, I don't think it's just as simple as we didn't vote on it. Can I speak? Yes. I, I agree. I remember at that meeting there was very, very strong discussion that we would not have an attorney present during our meetings. Now, if they just want to come and be here, that's one thing. But to actually detain someone to come and sit at each meeting, um, as a board, we have, we have absolutely said no, that that would not happen. Additionally, we already have a retained attorney firm, Sands and Anderson, so why are we, I, I don't understand why we're, why we're revisiting this. I'm sorry? Could, could we not use an attorney firm? It just seems to me like we have a lot of legal things coming up. I have questions a lot of times, and I just would feel more comfortable if there was an attorney present. I thought of one of our meetings. Uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, are you recognizing the individual? Yes, 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 please. I apologize, Mr. Johnson, but um, I thought of one of our meetings we had said that uh, someone was going to look into the uh, cost or how we would approach this, whether they would be maybe possibly Zoom instead of uh, coming in. <coughs>
At the request of the board, we issued an RFP for an insurance consultant to guide Accomack County Schools through the renewal process for our medical, dental, and vision uh, insurances. Those bids were received on the 26th. They were evaluated and ranked, and the top three, um, we had inter individual interviews with the top three, and the committee um, unanimously selected the first, the rank, I'm sorry. <laughs> The committee unanimously selected the same firm as number one. We began negotiations with that firm this morning. The interviews were held yesterday. Um, we are satisfied that we came up with a good contract that would be advantageous to Accomack County Schools, subject to legal review tomorrow if this board agrees to go forward in the amount of $23,000. Uh, we think that there are a lot of areas that we can the offerings to our employees. Uh, at this point though, we need to just secure a medical, dental, and vision renewal since this is about a $6 million contract and affects approximately 550 employees and their families. So um, based on that, we recommend that uh, the company named Mark Free be awarded the RFP and we uh, proceed 
associated with trying to secure a contract with them. Madam Chair, I, I would like to see that we uh, have an attorney at least review the contract um, and they can do it properly. Then, So am I to understand that if the attorney approves it, that we're okay to move forward with that? If well, the board is that, yes. That, okay. Is that a motion? We're trying to figure out what the motion is. Is that, anyone have a problem with that? Otherwise, we'll make that a motion. That's the motion. If you want to, we'll ask you to send it to the attorney, and if there's no problems, then That's the motion. I'm asking for I'm asking for someone to make a motion so we can set the I make a motion that Thank we you. accept the current uh RFP with the contingent that the lawyer checks it out and approves it that we go with that company. Second. All in favor? Uh, All opposed. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay, next one. Right, school board items. <coughs> We should really consider doing the four 10 hour days for the 12 month employees. Um, I think they're beneficial for their um, well being and this coming that's good for them. Um, I'd even like to make a motion now that we change the four 10 for the 12 month employees. Um, yeah, I can't see the need to put that on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. We can rescind the motion from the last meeting and vote proper rules of order right here. <laughs> In order to change the agenda, we would need a uh, two thirds vote. Okay. So the motion is to have the question put back on the agenda to move to four 10 hour days for 12 month employees. And I need.
So I'll agree with Ms. Jackson. Um, all the presentations were awesome. Um, I would like to say hello, young man. Um, I don't know if you were here at the last meeting, but I missed it. I'm Miss Handy. Um, I missed it because I, I'm doing commencement and it's a lot of work, so I wasn't able to get here. Um, also, for Girls on the Run and the senior walkthrough at Matonkin and Kipatang Elementary Schools, I don't know if we've ever done that before, but when I tell you, I thought that that was an awesome type of thing to do, you know, to bring them back to where they started. I thought that that was really, really um, nice. Um, I also would like to, and I don't know how to get this done, but I really believe that in, in my research over the past couple of weeks, um, just having received numerous, numerous phone calls and texts regarding the meeting that did not end until 11.45, I honestly believe that we need, we have a start time, which is 6.30, but unless we are working on something that is like extremely, extremely important, no meeting, even at the higher ed level, has ever lasted longer than two hours. Um, I'm not sure why we have to go around. I'm not sure how much can actually be done prior to us getting here so we don't hold up. I mean, I think it's rude and disrespectful for us to disappear for two hours and have people sitting out here waiting for us so that they can do a public comment or whatever. Um, plus, my work day starts at 5 o'clock. This is a lot for me. I'm tired. And I start to get brain fog around 9. Um, so I'm not sure how... I don't want to use the word competent, effective, um, I can be. And then I haven't eaten since 12 o'clock. You know, I mean, for me, this, this, is, this is a whole lot. Um, I don't understand why the agendas are still top heavy all the time. Um, since we started, they've been really, really top heavy. Also, and this is just my last comment, um, I would like to say to all of the employees of Akamai County Public Schools, be you a custodian, bus driver, administrator, teacher, whatever the case may be, I fully support you in your positions. Um, I don't personally think that it was fair for us to, to talk against any school um, when the vaping conversation came up, but that's what I felt happened, um, that some comments and remarks were made. And sometimes when those things go out, you can't take them back because somebody's already heard it. You can't take that back. And if I was a person working in the school system, as you all are, and I was told, well, we tried to work that out, but it didn't work because people, I mean, the undertone was you're not doing your jobs, I would be offended. So I'm going to apologize for my part in sitting here and listening to it. Um, but I think we, we can do better professionals. Okay, Thank I, you. Don't, I don't know if you were aiming that at me, but I mean, no, I'm speaking for, for okay. anybody who would agree I just wanted to say, I, I mean, I think there are things we could do. Well, we don't need to tell the whole world that. Right. We really, we don't, we do not, some things do not need to be aired in public. And that's the point I'm trying to make. When we do that, we do not become, we are no longer seen as professionals when we put people down. For, they are doing their absolute best under whatever the circumstance is. But for us to say, oh, well, we tried. And you know what, since you said that, yeah, I'm talking to you. Um, we, Janet, please, really, please, seriously, like, it's getting to be too much. And, and that's, uh, it's getting to be too much. Anything else? Anything else? It's too much. Anything else? Thank you for your service, but it's too much. Anything else? No, ma'am. Okay. There are things that could be done, but we have chose we have chose to do things the way we're doing them. Uh, I don't I don't know. I'm not a vape expert. I don't work in high school. Uh, they tried the vape sensors. They decided not to go forward with those. Maybe they weren't working. I don't know. But I believe that little boy came here and he's genuinely concerned. And I feel like we, as a board, we need to stop ignoring that. We need to stop ignoring the cell phone use and all the TikTok videos, and these children are paying attention in class, and we need to stop ignoring the fact that they're going in the bathrooms and vaping. We need to stop ignoring those things. And I just want to say that Mr. Neal, Mr. Lumber, myself, and I, we met with the deputy 
Director of Education and Secretary of Education for Virginia, Senator Bill Staff, Representative Rob Oxley. It was very enlightening. They brought a lot of energy. There was also uh, people from Amazon there who made a donation to our staff program. Um, so, and they shared with me some information that I'm going to uh, share with Dr. Hall, and we're going to start. You're going to see a little bit of a different format some things, some metrics that we're going to start looking at in our meetings. And I, I would just say, um, you know, I don't know if we've had this many projects going on, but we, we had the Acomac Primary School. That is very much busy. That has to be cleaned out, and that's going to be renovated. The IT department is undergoing construction. The servers have to be moved. We're in the middle of resuming. All those families will have to be notified of their new school and their fam and what, what school they're going to be going to and what bus they're going to be getting on. Um, what else? There's something else. There's, I mean, it's just a very, there's a lot of big, these are big projects that are going to require a lot of people. So, oh, the uh, ERP system. I, Hopefully that's supposed to be up and running by July 1, so hopefully that, that'll, be, uh, that'll, that'll be get done all the time. And we have several openings. We have to hire central office staff. We have to hire administrators. It's going to be a very busy summer. I kind of want uh, to echo what Dr. Johnson Sandy had said um, about Seniors going to Tompkin and uh, Keggy Train. Uh, I don't think it has been done before, and I think it was a good success. And when we hear the bomb, maybe when we go around and we hear your side, I know you've been uh, you were part of that, so I get what you have to say. Um, that's it for me. Good evening. Well, I can say I am sorry I had to leave early the last meeting due to a family emergency. But I'd like to thank Acomac Elementary and Kevin Tank Elementary for the STEM demonstration on 5-7-2024. Excellent presentation and keep up the good work. And also thank everybody for the girls on the run. So hopefully we'll have it again in this fall. To be blunt, I feel this board is not acting as a board. We are supposed to work together and make decisions for Acomac County Public School as one team. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it is not happening that way. The board try is trying to correct the past instead of thinking of the present situation. The county is short of bus drivers, teachers, and staff employees. Instead, instead of working as a team to find solutions to get more employees, they are trying to correct other past issues Busy with this board is they are spending more time trying to run the day-to-day -day operation, which is not the board's responsibility. The board's responsibility is supervising the superintendent and making policies for Acomac County Public Schools. They have forgotten these responsibilities, and I am a member of this board, and yes, we are not following our own rules of the uh, policies for school board members. Thank you. I would just say that, uh, you know, with the retention bonuses that are going out, whatever, and you know, the bus drivers speaking, cafeteria workers, we as a board need to come together and figure something out to compensate these people for their, their work and their hard work. Especially for retired bus drivers that have already did their job now, they're coming back and doing more work, and they did not. So as a board, we need to do something to give them what they deserve. I feel like I'm just going to feed back off everybody else. I agree with Mr. Whitford. I understand why these men and women who drive the buses, maybe some retirees come by food service or whatever. I understand why they can't be on time because of the ERS, but I would fall in the same situation. But if there's any way we could find some money, would show how appreciative we are of these men and women coming back to work. Obviously, I would like to thank the people who came in and spoke, especially the students who drove on the run. It's always great to hear from and, and see a copy. Of the, uh, of the children. Thank you. Mr. Um, I just want to 
to thank you to the elementary school for letting us walk through. It was a really good experience for most of us. We're about to graduate, um, including the teachers and bus drivers that helped us get that all together. Um, I also want to add that if you're going to continue the student representative on the board, if you guys could look into moving a closed session to the end of the, day, the end of the meetings because if we're only required to be here until nine and majority of that time is taken for a closed session, it's really no purpose in us being here. Mountain State Police, they are working to get him and steal their HIV card information. And says apparently they, they do not manage that locally. And as far as the local town law enforcement, he says he has no contact with them and he does not even know if they have a chip enabled um, badges. And um, he further stated that the only way to um, other option for providing access to the schools is to issue a master key to each entity to have their own um, key in an emergency response kit. So, and I know he had mentioned that once before and it was thought maybe not a, a good thing to do, but that was as far as the key. Um, also, he was asked to, do we have a network? Is that part of it? Uh, The website, well, we have, I've sent out an email to everyone, and I asked all of the um, principals to please go on and update the website, and I did tell them that when people look at our website in Accomack County, they don't necessarily go to the individual schools at first, they go to the total website. And if they see old pictures, and of course when they're seeing pictures on there with um, people, staff with masks, they know those pictures have to be at least a year or two old. So I did send an email out to all the principals, and I have a principal's meeting on Thursday, and I'll, I'll re-talk to them about that. I did go on and put some pictures on. If you look at the website, you'll see it's an easy that I put some pictures on from Sunday um, with the girls on the run. And um, the schools are doing so many wonderful things. And they, if you look at their websites, they've got pictures on all the time with all the different activities. So it's like, Okay, just share those so they can go on the main website because their websites look really good. So I did update that information. The other thing that came about was that was on the agenda and it was taken off is the it was on there for an action item for um, graduation dates. So for next year, so that was a part of the calendar and it really wasn't voted on. It was voted in with the calendar, but usually those dates are always um, set by the executive director of secondary and the schools. Those are the graduation dates and they do it usually on a rotating basis of who has graduations first, second, and um, last or what have you. So we, uh, a change was suggested and when the change was suggested to have, to meet the needs of maybe family members coming out of town, um, Purdue, people who work at Purdue, Tyson, all of those, instead of having them different nights during the week, especially for relatives coming out of town, let's try like they do in a lot of the school divisions across the, the Commonwealth, and including Northampton County, try it on a Saturday. There was no opposition to it, the principals went along with it. But then we did understand from the chair that there was some unrest with it which it wasn't a big deal to go back and fix that. So if people didn't want to have it on a Saturday, then it was easy to go back and fix it. So um, 
the executive director, Ms. Taylor, <clears throat> she went back and she talked to all the principals, and none of them had really heard anything about it, um, but we did, when she was doing some more digging, she did find out there was uh, a little bit of talking about it. So went back and changed it, and so we have a new calendar, uh, new graduation dates for next year, and she has spoken to all of the administrators, they're okay with their date, we had to make sure that the convention center was okay for Shinka days, but they're now June the 10th will be Nando High, June the 11th will be Arcadia High, June the 12th is um, Shinka Day High, and June 13th will be Tangier Combined School. So that was the only other thing. For, 20, for 2025. That's not this year, no. That's <laughs> 2025, that's the next school year. Because those this year is all set and everything. It was next year that was gonna change and we're gonna have all of them on a Saturday at different staggered times during the day, except Tangier would have been that Friday. So um, other than that, the other thing that I have is um, um, we met today with the um, architect from um, for the auxiliary gym at um, Manua and the gym at Hermitage. And we're at the stage now where some decisions have to be made as well because we don't have a whole, whole lot. Of, it's really, really a lot more expensive than what initially um, the budget is. So our next steps, we would like to have two board members to be on the committee to meet back with the architect so that we can look at both sets of plans and everything that's entailed with them and decide which one we're going to move on first. So we need two board members that will be on No, today we met with him, he laid it all out, he showed us all the plans and everything, and so the next steps before we decide on, because the bottom line is we have two gyms, we don't have money right now for the morning, basically. So, I mean, they're really, really expensive. And they, they can't use, we, we can't use any of that after school money for this after school buildings. <laughs> <laughs> because the one that we're gonna have to use, one of them is so high, we're gonna have to do some, probably our care or something. So, but we need, we don't want to just make that decision of which one we're going to do. We want two members just to be in on that conversation and then come back with a meeting or two. So then we can decide on which one. Was it a Zoom meeting available to you? He did say that, yeah, he, he was Zoom, but. Um, I meant for, I meant for, for, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Where work. I worked in Salisbury, it was officials and those who meet his requirements, but I could do Zoom. He did say that. Um, so is this something that parents would need to be involved in? No, it's building, it's just building the gym. You remember, public is, is, they don't really have a gym, like Tank Attack has a gym. We didn't build them one, so it's a gym for Punkatick. And then it was, the other plan was an auxiliary gym for an annual high school to use for a practice, or like a practice gym or something like that. Two gyms, and both of them are coming in way over what we call but we gotta pay for it. And I think we can figure out where we can agree with one and do one. Okay. So, no, if not. And I will be the alternate with y'all can make it out. Okay. <coughs> so I'll let um, Bobby know that tomorrow. So we can what go okay. Okay. Does it, it doesn't sound like a very fun committee. You have two big projects in one month. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn the place here. Sure.